So we'll go ahead and kick it off. I'll start out, Ron, and then we'll have uh, Alan and Jeff will jump in and rotate and ask you questions. Um, first one, uh, you've won at Bristol five times. This is, you know, one of your, you're the, the winningest funny car racer here in NHRA history. Uh, to be, not be able to race here for two years, were you kind of chomping at the bit to get back? Yeah, and it's, it's by the way, it is strange to have my name above John Force as far as wins anywhere. Um, so that's a good thing. And uh, yeah, the track has been, for whatever reason, through many different crew chiefs I've gone, gotten, a, you know, legendary crew chiefs I've gotten to work with, I've won there a lot. So there's something to be said about that. We could really use it right now. And, I'm, and this is why uh, I'm so pumped about not just the fact that it's in the countdown, but uh, it's a place that, uh, you know, the fans love. And you start to get asked from fans, you know, where's a place I could go that I haven't been or what's a track? I mean, you always, you know, it's top three because you start talking about Thunder Valley and just the, uh, the atmosphere, the fans alone. Um, you know, it's just a unique place. So I'm happy to see it on the schedule because we could sure use some, uh, some rounds right now. We're fighting to, to get the points lead back. All right, we'll uh, open it up for questions. We'll go with Alan Gregory first. Go ahead, Alan. Yeah, Ron, well, how big a difference do you think it'll make with racing here in the fall? Uh, will that change the uh, speeds and the, the pressure? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you know, what what ends up happening, you know, and, and like many of these tracks we go to during the summer, Thunder Valley included, uh, you really get tested temperature wise, but the track having the sun beat down on it. And it's not necessarily because it might be hot. It's just the fact that there's no clouds. And a lot of times that sun beats down directly on that rubber and that rubber's up there with the sportsman running all day. And NHRA does a good job. The track does a good job of keeping it ready for the pros to get up there. But you, there's not a lot you can do when you're trying to get 11,000 horsepower planted to those good years on that little layer of rubber and the sun's just beating down and making it mushy and gushy. Uh, it really puts these crew chiefs at a test and the drivers, because you got to be ready to pedal it. So I've won many races there in Bristol, you know, Father's Day weekend, um, either pedaling it or just coming together as a team and figuring out a way to get down a tricky, hot, gooey racetrack. And that will not be the case this, this coming race. It is going to be firm. Temperatures will be down. The sun won't be in the same location it's usually at. So it's not going to be directly beating straight down on this track. And that, for the crew chiefs, they just start licking their chops. For the drivers, we kind of start pulling our belts a little bit tighter because you know you're going to go on a ride. And uh, that's an incredibly fun track to race at for a lot of different reasons. And, uh, you know, so it's going to be different and it's going to be much faster. And I, I don't doubt we're going to see absolutely track records fall in every category. And you currently hold the track record set back in 2016 at 3.884 seconds. So wow, nice segue. I love hearing that. I didn't even know that. So that must have been a Friday night run. We've had some epic, epic Friday night sessions there. Uh, so yeah, see if we that will be broken. By the way, <laughs> I have a good feeling. And I, I hope it's our Nap Auto Parts car. And Dale Worsham has the speed record at 3.29.42, also set at that same race. That will be broken for sure. Cars are flying this year. Funny cars is tough and close as it's ever been, but the speeds have been up a lot. So that'll be, that'll fall. All right. We'll go to Jeff Birchfield. Go ahead, Jeff. Since you guys talking about qualifying, how much of an adjustment is that, Ron, that you guys don't have all four sessions now like you previously did? It's, um, it's only an issue if you're not a car that, you, that goes up there and tries to steal number one, you know, fastest ET of the session. And I have that with Guido and John Medlin and the team that I have this year, we have a car that, you know, I've had more pole positions probably this year and I have the last few years together. So it's a car that they love to just let it fly. And it's unfortunate that we don't have that fourth run because that's another three points possible, but it's the same for everybody. So um, it's a little different, <coughs> excuse me. It is, uh, it puts a little more pressure on teams when you get there and you might have you know, you, you hear teams talk about in whatever motorsports it is, a small gremlin pop up somewhere. And in drag racing, there's so many things that have to go right with that race car to go 330 miles per hour at 3.8 seconds, right? I mean, there can't be hardly anything wrong. And there's a lot of adjustments. So 
if you have one little thing going on in your car and you're chasing it around, those three runs can really put the pressure on you. Uh, not only do you not have another chance at learning what the car wants to do on that racetrack, but you don't have that luxury, more importantly, of a Friday afternoon run that you can put in the record and look at the computer and go back up Friday night when the conditions are going to be the absolute best that we're going to see. Friday night sessions are almost always where you're going to end up in that qualifying order come Sunday morning race days. So um, it does change things a lot and it has all year. So, um, but we've gotten used to it, I think. All right. And Ron, you mentioned the, uh, the countdown playoffs. You're currently in second now. Um, what kind of battle do you expect? You got John Force in the mix, Matt Hagan. Oh, you know, I hate mentioning names because Anthony, you you, uh, st you feel like you leave somebody out, right? Um, there's so many cars. Tim Wilkerson has probably, uh, I think I'm gonna get a shirt made that says I've got Wilked because <laughs> he he beat us in the final round. You know, he, I've had a lot of w wins against him, and I think he's just getting us back. But that's a team that doesn't get mentioned a lot and has won two big time races and twice they've upset us. And um, you go down the list, Cruz Pedregon's car is running extremely well. J.R. Todd, of course. Um, so a lot of really good cars and um, you can't count anybody out. Legitimately, Anthony, the top 10 that show up that are fighting for a world championship, every car has a legitimate chance of winning. Now, I don't mean a chance. I mean a probable chance that they're going to be in the winner's circle. It's crazy this year. You just don't know. So um, it's been tough. It, it doesn't matter. I mean, there's been times you can ask anybody to go down the funny car division, talk to Robert Height, Force, Hagen, me, whoever. There's times you struggle a little bit and you might end up in a spot um, where you think, you know, it, you don't know who you're going to run first or second round. Or there's times where you won and you qualify one or two and you think you might have what we call, what we'd like to think, and a little bit easier first round. It might be a part-time car or something. And next thing you know, you got somebody that struggled like a John Force or a Hagen or somebody. So it's been topsy turvy this year. And uh, I don't see that changing. And the countdown is always stressful. It's always exciting. And I'm excited for Thunder Valley to be part of it this year because, you know, it's going back to its normal Father's Day next year. And it's um, it's only fitting with all the COVID stuff getting back into it that we have this sort of really cool wrinkle thrown into the countdown uh, with an extra race and go in there in the fall. All right, we'll go back to Alan. Alan, do you have a, another question for Ron? Yes, Ron. What is it about you in Bristol? It's, we've interviewed, interviewed you here a bunch of times. Seems like you're always having a great time. You're always doing well. It seems like you're relaxed here in the mountains, you know, of Tennessee, a long way from California. Is this something you like about this place? Is it unique? or? Uh, you know what's strange? I might have told you before. I, one of the first few times I went there, I, I met a family. That I, my back was tweaked that week, and I could hardly stand and there was a local chiropractor and I still have them in my, my phone. Um, they just took me in. In fact, they invited me over to their house for dinner. Um, and then I ended up uh, playing in the charity golf tournament that year and ended up meeting a few people and they invited me over to their house the next night for dinner. It was just, it, it just, I think it's something to do with you develop this mojo at certain places and it would be easy for me to say, yeah, I've got a crew chief that really loves this track and these conditions, but I've won with different owners, Don Perdome, Don Schumacher, with different crew chiefs. You go to the legendary Ed McCulloch that was my crew chief for a while, Ron Tobler, Roland Leong, um, and now, of course, Guido and John Medlin. So I, I don't I don't know. I, I just sometimes it's strange that you feel like you just get this certain um, – certain thing and it's hard to explain but you just feel the and you wonder about it sometimes there's times I've rolled in there we haven't we didn't run well we had problems and you wake up Sunday morning you're like oh boy it's gonna be a short day I might want to look at flights out on Sunday night early right and there you are you're standing in the winter circle again and you're like wow how did this happen you know it's just um it's it and on top of that I love the history of our sport and that's one of the most historic places we go up to Bruton Suite every every year uh, to meet the fans up there and walking along those hallways and seeing the pictures of uh, our forefathers and NHRA in the old days, um, all the IHRA tracks and all the heroes that I looked up to. It's a very historic place. So um, I think just all that together, I can't pinpoint it though. All right, Jeff, do you have another question for Ron? Yeah, Ron, you were talking about the points a while ago and then uh... 
of course, you're battling Matt right now. He's the guy ahead of you. So when you're in a position like that, we always hear about, you know, you guys, same team, teammates working together, or does it become every man for himself at a certain point? Oh, no, it's, trust me, <laughs> maybe Monday through Thursday, but there is a definite, uh, and I've said it before, even when Tommy Johnson and Beckman were my teammates, sit. You, I always felt like we had to go through those cars for a championship. And Hagen, no doubt, that's a great car. Him and Dickie Venables, that's a local track for him. Um, they are running good and they're tough. And just like these other cars I mentioned, they're they're going to be there at the end. And I made a mistake the last race, and it was me that made the mistake on the starting line. Very, I hadn't done it twenty years um, or more, and we had the best car on the grounds. And so I've been waiting a week and a half almost two weeks to get back in the car and try to redeem myself. So uh, I couldn't think of a better place to be coming up. And, uh, you know, Hagen's car is, uh, it's less than a three point lead as we speak right now. We hope to to gain some more before we get to Thunder Valley, but it's gonna be a, a dog fight down to the end. There's no doubt about it. But to answer your question, um, you wanna beat our teammates more than you do these other cars. There's a little bit of bravado at the shop during the week that you wanna, you know, it's really something you, you want to carry with your team and have a little bit of bragging rights. And uh, we know we have the same parts, great parts, great cars. So it, it does come down to the team members. All right, uh, Alan, do you have another question? Yes, Ron, I was just wondering about the health. Where do you see the health of the Freddy Car Division? Do you think you'll eventually see more younger drivers um, like we've seen in Top Fuel? The health, like of the, yes. of the category? Yes. Yeah, um, it's weird uh, throughout the years, even when I was a kid growing up, watching how the fluctuation of funny car to dragster and, and one category seemed like it would balloon up a little bit more. And then the next one, uh, honestly, you know, we've had just a few funny car category at, at races this year that were under 16. Uh, the dragster quite a bit more for whatever reason. Um, uh, and I hope to announce this next week, Anthony, but I'm, I'm going to be going out on my own next year. And, uh, and I, I think the sport has to evolve and it's got to keep going. And I've been in the sport as a driver for 27 years. And, uh, and so I think it's better than ever. And I hear all kinds of other sort of rumors about more cars being out here, dragsters as well for next year. And, uh, and I think it's in a great spot. Listen, even through getting back to racing, uh, I, you don't hear a lot of people bragging about sellouts and crowds, football games. You know, you look at these 90,000 plus stadiums right now going on and people are trying to just downplay a little bit of, of these crowds. Right. But most of our races we've been at, I haven't seen very many empty seats. So our fans, first of all, are incredible and they missed their drag racing. And I can tell you right now, it will be a packed house there because we haven't gone there in a while. Um, so yeah, I, I think the health of our sport is great, but I, I really think Funny Car um, is going to grow even more come next year. And it, my gosh, it's you like I said, go down, ask any Funny Car driver down the list, and it's as tough this year as we've ever seen it. And we've said that a lot in the past. I know I've said that to you before. I've never seen it this competitive and this tough um, every single race. Uh, Jeff, do you have another question for Ron? Yeah, Ron, this one's unrelated to drag racing, but I know uh, last year when I talked to you, you were in the middle of the, you know, shut, uh, COVID shutdown, and you were playing a lot of the uh, iRacing games and all that. And then also, uh, just sort of your thoughts. I know you're a big motorsports fan besides just drag racing. What was your observation of the Bristol NASCAR re weekend we recently had? Oh, man, I loved all that. You know, I'm a huge fan. And yesterday I was with Chase Elliott uh, at Napa headquarters. Uh, and we talked a lot about their uh, their playoffs, and he had an interesting takes on it. And and it's, um, yeah, I'm a huge fan. I follow everything. I get up and watch Formula One live in California. Uh, so, you know, every NASCAR race, I don't miss much. Um, what was the first party question? Sorry. Well, I was asking about the I racing also, but since you mentioned Chase Elliott, sort of was your take on the Chase Elliott Kevin Harvick situation? Yeah, you know, Chase is, he's so subdued and quiet and as much like his dad, but, you know, every time somebody brings that up to me, I remind him, he, he's got some fire in him. And, and honestly, I, I know Kevin, a California guy, and that's not a guy that I would not pick in a fight. 
So when I saw that, it was just, uh, you know, I thought that was going to get escalate a lot quicker um, and maybe get a little more out of bounds than it did. So they, they kept their composure, but that's going to come back to haunt one or both those guys here in the countdown. I, I can tell they, they, uh, it was interesting though, that Kevin grabbed him and took him into Chase's trailer. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how many people saw that, but that was, that was pretty interesting. Um, but yeah, it's just, uh, you know, I, 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 uh, I'm hooked on all that stuff. So I love it. So Ron, with Bristol's reputation in the NASCAR circuit for kind of um, making tempers flare, do you think that could uh, translate back to the drag strip with only, you know, three playoff races left with things getting really tight, having that kind of drama and excitement here maybe as the NHRA gets ready to crown a champion? Because there's never really been that kind of scenario here. No. And uh, yeah, it's it, and it seems things get a little chippier every race into the countdown. So Listen, we're, we're going to be at Thunder Valley, and there's only going to be two events left after that. So for a lot of teams, and this is the unique thing about our playoffs, the countdown of the championship is, and I've said this many times in the past, the people and the teams and drivers and that you really have to worry about in these situations, especially when you get down to the wire the last three races, are the cars that are not in it or fighting their last chance to get back into it because they start throwing everything at it and taking you know, precautions out the window. And all of a sudden they're trying things in the race car to see, Hey, I got nothing to lose. And those are the teams will jump up and bite you. So you have these teams that are fighting for it up front. And then you got these other teams that don't necessarily have much to lose. And then you have the ones that might be out of it. And they're like, you know what? I'm tired of seeing all these other cars on TV. I'm going to kick their butts and I'm going to show them that I can run with them. So you get all this, and it builds up every single time as the, the countdown goes on. So things will definitely get in, in every category, I would imagine, a little bit, like I said, a little chippier the, the longer we go on and, and things, you know, people get a little more uh, aggravated at the smaller little things as we go on. So you never know. All right, uh, Jeff or Alan, do you guys have another question for Ron, either one of you? Sort of along those lines, Ron, do you see more games being played like staging and stuff at this point of the season? <laughs> it's funny you bring that up. Uh, well, you know, you just don't know. You know, I, I've been doing this, like I said, 27 years. Uh, and I let one of the oldest tricks in the book uh, catch me. And uh, yes, things are going to, people are going to pull out every stop. You know, you got force that does his deep stage and you got people that, that take their time stage. And, and I don't mean just funny car and drags. So you get pro stock stuff. You watch that, the burn downs going on and people making uh, other drivers wait a little longer to try and get an advantage. So I, I definitely see more games, if you want to call it, going on. And listen, there's nothing better than to whip somebody's butt after they played a game with you at the starting line, uh, whether it's the next time or that run particularly. So uh, I do. I do see that. And again, to the reference before, you're going to see that as we go on through the countdown and um, people are going to try anything to get a win, no matter what. All right, Alan, do you have another question? No, I just want to thank you. Ron. We appreciate your time there, Ron. We look forward to seeing you again next week, man. Always yeah, of course. Same time. here. Same here. Been a while. Cool. All right, Ron, we'll... thank you, Ron. Always great to deal with, man. You too. We'll see you guys soon. All right, Rob. Well, good luck this weekend in Texas, and we'll look forward to seeing you over here in uh, Thunder Valley in a few days. Sounds good. Thanks, Anthony. All right. Thanks.